I might, I might bring this up that you know, when I was in medical school, and that's quite a few years ago, um, at that time there was already uh, information brewing about this, and we had a lecturer that was presented to us while I was in medical school who believed, and this is almost uh, uh, maybe a radical view of drugs in general, that there is no such thing as a bad drug. There's only bad relationships that people have with drugs. And I think that's in some ways a very good way to view the whole, um, the whole science of this is that um, drugs are inanimate objects and it's what we do with them that makes them bad and education and uh, some sort of a supervi supervision which comes from parents and physicians and, and true information getting out is probably the best thing that we could do in terms of making sure that uh, our future generations um, don't suffer mal effects from any drugs. Well, I was 32 years old and as you can well expect, I didn't feel very good about having cancer. I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis after one MRI in January 1995. Yeah, I was diagnosed in 1987 uh, after going on a, right before going on a climbing expedition. And I was diagnosed with MS in the year I got out of nursing school. I suffer from an extreme form of migraine. Um, it's been diagnosed several times as basilar migraine, atypical migraine with aura, different names. My case was very mild. Um, I was not put on any medications. I worked full time for the state of New Jersey. I was an active volunteer here in my community. By February 2001, it had escalated to the point where I am now legally blind. I cannot walk without assistance. I'm basically homebound. Um, when the temperature gets very cold because of muscle spasms, I cannot move. When it strikes, I, I end up with numbness on one side, uh, vertigo, I can't hear very well, I can't see, I'm uh, extremely nauseous um, with pain and so on, those sorts of conditions. It basically just knocks me out where I can't do anything from anywhere from 8 hours to 72 hours when it uh, when it starts and uh, typically without treatment I'm getting maybe three attacks a week so it's quite life impeding when it's happening. Certainly I think uh, one of the longer standing uses right now would be for a nausea associated with, a, with various conditions both uh, cancer chemotherapy, uh, the effects of HIV and HIV drugs um, and um, glaucoma would probably be the ones that are uh, foremost, but I think the ones that really stand out right now are those people who are using it for the side effects of the drugs that we give them for chemotherapy, uh, either related to cancer or uh, it, to, to prevent the, the advance of HIV disease. While waiting to recover, they wanted to use an experimental drug um, in order to uh, deal with the nausea that was going to be expected with the chemotherapy. I said yes to that experimental drug, which was a big mistake. Um, it was more of a psychotropic drug that uh, made me extremely uncomfortable, uh, very sensitive to light, very sensitive to any kind of uh, auditory stimulation. Couldn't sleep, couldn't move practically. So it was a very bad experience. I've been on Avanex, but I had to be removed. I was on Avanex. It's an injection you take weekly. I was on that for four years, and it's $250 a shot. Um, it damaged my heart. I now have cardiac myopathy, and I have pulmonary hypertension. So these drugs have been more detrimental than helpful to me. As a matter of fact, the prescribed drugs, I take five prescriptions a day, a total of 12 pills, and all of them can lead to liver damage. They, they tried me on high dose of steroids when I first got diagnosed, and when I first got diagnosed on the high dose of steroids, the problem that became was when you're allergic to them, you become psychotic or you become extremely depressed. And I went through both umbrella of spectrum of symptoms and said, this isn't going to work for me. They tried me on the experimental, I think it's Avalox, and the Avalox class of medications, which I'm more highly allergic to. So I wound up taking the Avalox, having an allergic reaction where my lungs filled up with fluid, and the doctors were like, we can give you additional medicines. I could counteract the medication that you're getting. And I said, no. 
They started me out on the traditional migraine drugs, uh, beta blockers, which are a uh, high blood pressure medication. I was on those for about two years. They had very little effect on my migraines, and the side effects were quite severe. I was like, uh, it felt like living in molasses the whole time. I, I could think well, I was sleepy and cold all the time. I, I could have lived with those side effects if it had worked. And then they started layering on other medications trying to make it work, amitriptyline, also known as Elevil, which is a tricyclic. Um, that actually helped somewhat. It had its own side effects, which weren't too bad at first. Later on, I got very severe gastrointestinal side effects and actually had to go off that one, which was a shame. Calcium channel blockers, not bad side effects, had no impact on the migraines. Um, Topamax, that was one of the worst. That's an anti-epileptic drug, and it caused severe cognitive difficulties where basically I couldn't add 2 plus 2 while I was on it. I wasn't on it that long because uh, basically I have, would have had to quit my job if I stayed on that drug. Uh, basically it's been those sorts of drugs mixed and matched. There's uh, In each category I was probably tried about three drugs from each category plus combinations of those drugs over 15 years I would say. Um, I really got at most maybe a 30% reduction of the migraines from those drugs. I decided instead of signing up for the drugs that, well, there's the, the drug that you take for the pain, but that constipates you, so you have to take the constipation drug, but then that actually gives you diarrhea, so you need a little diarrhea drug. Instead of taking five or six of the prescriptions, I decided to go a natural route and um, smoke marijuana. The treatment took uh, three different uh, doses of chemotherapy. Um, over a uh, three-month period of time, um, I got extremely weak. I went from uh, about 145 pounds to about 110. Um, that's when I learned. Uh, that's basically when I learned that marijuana could help with my appetite, and so that's when I began using it a little bit uh, to be able to. Uh, to eat, put on some weight, be strong enough to come in for the next chemotherapy uh, session. I had to go off of one pharmaceutical, the one that was working, the tricyclic, because of the gastrointestinal effects. And at that point, the migraines were back full blown, and I really had no other treatments at that point, which is when I started investigating alternative medicine. So I, you know, I did acupuncture, biofeedback, um, uh, chiropractic. I can't remember them all. Uh, things with odors you sniff that are supposed to help. None of them really did much good, unfortunately. So I started looking into alternative medications that might work. Uh, fever few is uh, one. Uh, ginger. Um, oh, I can't even remember some of them now. None of them had any impact whatsoever. Medicinal marijuana. Medicinal marijuana, absolutely. Every doctor I talked to that I asked about it, any complications in it, they said that's the best thing to do. The doctors know. You, you spoke to your doctors about oh, yeah. using marijuana? Every single one of them. Every, from, from the surgeons to the oncologists to the radiation, every single one was, oh yeah, that's the best help for, for uh, the, the, uh, the effects of chemotherapy. So I started thinking back to when I was in college. When I was in college, I, had, uh, I did smoke marijuana back in college. And I must have just been starting to get this disorder then, but it was mild then. And I remember that I could take like a hit of marijuana and the, whatever it was I had would go away and not come back for three or four days. And I thought that was neat, you know, but it really didn't make much impact on me at the time because the disorder really wasn't that severe back then. That was like in the 70s when that was happening. Um, so I remember that and I remember a neurologist when I was first being diagnosed asked if I'd ever tried marijuana for my migraines. And I scoffed at the time because I was going, you know, no mild drug like that's going to have an impact on whatever's wrong with me. I thought at the time I, it was a brain tumor, actually, and I figured, you know, <laughs> I wrote out my will and everything. I said, there's no way cannabis could have any impact on this. So I put that aside. But after I ran out of medications, I started rethinking this and say, well, who knows, maybe it would work. Unfortunately, it was totally illegal in the state of New Jersey, so I knew I could try that. And uh, I was talking to various doctors, and one mentioned Marinol as a substitute. And I thought that sounded interesting, Marinol, which is basically pure THC, the active ingredient in uh, cannabis, in little sesame oil capsules. 